Sudoku, Sudoku, Number Place, Sujiwa Dokushini Kagiru. Everyone knows its name. It's the game that's in every newspaper, but really only old people play it. I'm, at this point, I'm convinced that the moment you, t- you retire, a, new, a Sudoku monster come, pops out of your mailbox and gums you, and then you're doomed to play Sudoku until the sweet, sweet release, release of death. death. Or so I thought. But I, I started to get into Sudoku somewhat recently, and I decided that I was going to look up the history of Sudoku, because I assumed it was kind of like chess, where it's existed forever, but like there's a modern iteration. And I was really wrong. Predecessors of Sudoku have been around since the 19th century, when Le Cecile... Le Cecile? I think it's Le Cecile published a version of Sudoku, but this one was a lot more about math rather than logic, and it it had double-digit numbers. Double-digit numbers? Get that shit out of here, mom! After a couple weeks, their rival, La France, which is, you know, unique name, decided to publish their own version. And it, it was a lot more like Sudoku we see today, but it wasn't quite, as this one was still about math, It had, but it just had numbers all along the outside of the square. But it, it took away all the double digit numbers and was more about having individual numbers in rows, columns, and, diag- and the two main diagonals. These puzzles were, were published for about a decade or two until World War I decided to fuck it all up. And then the game just kind of vanished. Then there was 65 long sudoku this year. Until this man came along, Howard Garns. Look at this beautiful man. In 1979, Howard Garns was working for Dell Magazine, and he worked on this game, and then they eventually published it, and they called it Number Place. Which is just an awful name. Here's the puzzle here, uh, or not. Uh, I sent an email to Dell Magazines to see if I could get the original number place that was produced, and the background will determine whether or not they responded to me. But overall, no one really cared about it that much. The game wasn't unpopular being published by Dell Magazines, but it wasn't a worldwide phenomenon. Yet, 1984, while the world was trying to figure out whether or not Orwell was right, a man by the name of Maki Kaji was changing the world in his own way. He encountered Number Palace, and he decided he was going to, and as he was the CEO of his own magazine, Nikolai, I hope I pronounced that correctly, uh, he decided to publish the game in his own magazine under the really catchy name, Suji wa Dokushin Kagiru. <sighs> really just no idea how, no one knows how to name anything. It just means the numbers should be single. Once the game started to catch on, his colleagues started to pressure him to, you know, come up with a better name. But like, Suji wa Dokushin Nikaguru kind of like rolls off the tongue, right? It just, I don't know why he would ever change it. But he really wanted to get to the horse races, because that's what he really liked to do. So, in a kind of fit of panic, as everyone was getting mad at him to come up with a better name, he just went, he just said, Sudoku, and then ran off and went gambling and just selling, just giving away all of his money. So I don't think he was that good. I don't know. I didn't look up whether or not he was good. 1989, Howard Garns dies before he can see the international success of Sudoku. He sees that there was success in Japan, but he doesn't see it before it becomes that worldwide phenomenon. That's all. Okay, both still recording. Perfect. 1997, the Honorable Judge Wayne Ga- Ga- Gold? 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 Gold. I'm just going gold. Uh, saw a Sudoku puzzle in a Japanese bookstore, and he saw the potential immediately. And as an amateur programmer, he spent the next six years developing a program to mass produce these unique puzzles. And mass produce them, he did. He started off by selling some of them to the Times in Britain, which really got him a big step as people started to love them, and people were missing trains. <laughs> And there was even, like, eventually lawsuits about how jurors were doing Sudoku instead of 
listening to trials. <laughs> so, Times published the game under the name Sue Dooku, sister of Count Dooku. And after the game exploded in popularity, Wayne decided he would go to the U.S. and try to expand the game more there. And he came up with the genius, genius marketing strategy of giving it away for free. I, do, I don't know why he decided he was going to give it away for free. Like, I don't know how that made him money, but whatever. You do you, goo. Gold. Fuck. <laughs> But this move of going to the U.S. and giving away all these puzzles for free to just whichever newspaper wanted to really worked out for him. The Times Magazine ended up naming him one of the most influential people in 2006. And against a couple big names, like, then him, but like, these, these two other people... Oh, whatever. 2005, Sudoku hits the main stage with Sudoku Live, hosted by Carol Wolderman from Countdown fame. And Carol, if you're watching, hi! Yeah, she'll be passed out by this time. Then the BBC just gets wind of Sudoku Live and decides to create its own Sudoku sh show called Sudoku, which combines... Sudoku with just kind of some like general knowledge. You have to answer a general knowledge question to be able to guess a they choose a square, you get to choose general. Then you get asked a question and then you get to see if it's right. And it's all oh, it's, it's honestly a really boring show. The most interesting part is in the in the one show I watched, one of the one of the guys started off by saying he broke both of his arms. But it, it, the show's not really that good because they don't even use like a Sudoku board. They don't like because Sudoku is nine by nine. As you know, everyone watching this video is obsessed with Sudoku, so they know. But in Sudoku, they use the six by six, so it's kind of I don't know. I don't, I don't like it. It's not it's not true Sudoku. Two thousand six, Peter Levy releases a Sudoku tribute song. The Japanese embassy even tries to nominate this for an award. I don't even. I couldn't even find what award they were trying to nominate for, but I hope it was I don't know, nerdiest song. Then the the first World Sudoku Championship started, and it was won by Jana Toy Tylova, and it was beautiful. And she won the wore this gross yellow bag. Why why do you wear the yellow bag? Now, I'm not going to bore you with all the details of all the SWCs, as we in the industry call it. So here are all the winners. We got Bag Lady, Thomas Snyder, Thomas Snyder, Jan Mazrowski, Jan Mazrowski, Thomas Snyder, Jan again. We got, then we got Jin C, then we got Coda, Coda, Tip Bunk, which is just my favorite name. <laughs> My favorite name I found in all this research. Coda again, Coda again, and then Ken Endo. The championships even had a cheating scandal. After one of the guys who, who ended up placing third in the entire tournament had really good results when qualifying, but really sucked the moment he got onto stage. And that kind of brings us all the way up to 2019. And you might be thinking, why are you stopping at 2019? COVID. 